Hello, Frank Spangler here for Learning Media Skills. And in today's lesson, we're going to take a look at how to work with 4K video in EDIUS Pro. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the options that are available for 4K editing uh, in EDIUS. Let's uh, open up a project here. Let's try a new project. And the options that you see here on this screen will depend primarily on the boxes that you may have ticked the first time that you started the program. That kind of gives EDIUS an idea of the type of footage that you normally edit with and sets up some presets for you. And uh, if you happen to check a box for 4K, you probably have something showing up here in 4K. So let's go ahead and use that. We can see over here in the right-hand panel um, the type of 4K that's defined here. However, that may not necessarily match the footage that you are going to be working with. And if possible, try and find out the precise settings that your 4K footage has been filmed in, in terms of bit rate, uh, frame rates, and uh, the size. To give you an idea of what I mean, let's go ahead and check the customize box here and open up and see what settings are available here to fine-tune the 4K project that you want to start. When people say 4K today, they usually mean UHD video, which is at this frame size of 3840 times 2160. This is kind of the standard uh, consumer, commercial, uh, we'll call broadcast standard for 4K video. It's called 4K, but really true 4K is uh, this setting here. It's really sometimes called uh, cinema 4K and more designed for uh, projecting in a theater environment. But the resolution for that is 4096 times 2160. And a lot of the cameras that are 4K capable actually shoot in this dimension, this frame size. For example, my Canon 5D Mark IV shoots at this uh, size. And uh, so if I wanted to edit a project in that size, the full size that uh, my camera is producing, then I would want to choose one of these. However, we'll notice that uh, EDIUS, in the latest version at least, uh, only gives you an option of um, a 24p and 23 0.98p progressive, which is kind of the film rate standard. And yet most cameras will also give you the option of filming in true 4K, but at a frame rate of 29.97, the more standard NTSC broadcast rate. But even though it doesn't show up here in the video presets, you can still uh, change that. Just pick either one of these, say the film rate one, but then uh, go down and change your frame rate to match how your footage was shot. So if your footage was shot at 29.97, then just change that uh, option there. Another thing to take note of, was your camera filming in 8-bit or 10-bit? If it was shot in 10-bit, you might as well do your project in 10-bit. You'll get a lot better options as far as color grading and uh, the, the banding between different shades of of blue, for example, in your sky are going to be a lot better if uh, you can set that to 10-bit if your footage was indeed shot in 10-bit. For color space, since your export will most likely be to regular video outlets, we can just leave the color space uh, at uh, the BT.709. For most project purposes, you'd want to do that. All right, uh, we don't really need four-channel audio in most cases. Um, maybe your camera is capable of four-channel audio, but are you really recording four separate channels? Probably not, unless you know for sure that the footage that you have to work with is having to work with four distinct channels of audio. You probably just want to change this to two channels. All right, and that uh, should be fine. I think everything else is fine. And so if you are actually wanting to output your project in true 4K, these are the settings that you would want to go with. However, you need to consider whether or not you or your client really want to deliver in 4K. 
at this point in the game in 2019, I still haven't had any client that is requesting 4K video. Most videos today are broadcast on YouTube or other internet outputs, and there is not a lot of noticeable difference between HD video and a 4K video when it is sent out over the internet. Uh, most people are just watching it on their iPads or their phones, and they're just not able to really notice the difference. And so at this point, most projects do not need to be edited in 4K or delivered in 4K. And then you might ask, well, why film in 4K if you're just always going to output to HD? Well, the reason why I'm filming in 4K is because I like to future-proof my stock footage. I tend to work in the same industry, and even though it's not a requirement now to deliver in 4K, I'm guessing in four years from now, five years from now, that's going to be standard. And if I'm filming in 4K now, everything that I shoot now is going to be available for use in the videos that I produce when it does become necessary. And so that's why I've been filming in 4K now for the last two years, even though I don't deliver in 4K. Most of the footage I've shot over the last two years is uh, ready for the future. But I don't edit in 4K. So I'm going to change this to what I usually edit in, and that's um, HD 1920 by 1080 at 29.97 progressive. And some of my footage these days is now 10 bits, so I'm going to change that to 10 bit, and I think we are good to go. So in addition to future proofing your 4K footage, uh, one of the advantages of filming in 4K is that it does give you a lot more flexibility when you're editing an HD project. So I just want to show you a few examples of that and how you can uh, manipulate your 4K video in EDIUS. The first example I'll show you is uh, some of the things that you can do in an interview. You've probably seen a lot of YouTube videos these days that are just full of jump cuts where people are editing what they're saying but not changing the angle of the camera or changing cameras. I get it. I understand why people are doing that. It's just too difficult to set up two cameras and, and then edit between the two when you're just trying to pump out a YouTube video. But when you're working on a documentary, it's nice to have either two cameras or the flexibility of 4K footage where you can jump between a wide view and a close-up. If you need to edit out a section of the video, you can use this to your advantage. Let's uh, give you an example here. Um, we'll just kind of do this roughly. Right about there. Let's do another cut there. Take out the middle section, bring it back. But here, for this second part of the interview, we're going to go in on her using F7 for our layouter tool. And for our layouter tool, I usually uh, reduce this to 25% so that I've got some handles to work with. And then just by grabbing any corner here, you can expand out the video. And then by pointing to it with your left mouse button down, you can rearrange that to kind of frame it up better. And because we're working with 4K video, we're not losing any resolution. If you want to check where, where you're at with your resolution, just slide down here. We'll see that we're still at only 69% of what we could be uh, in a high-definition timeline before we start losing resolution. So at 69%, we still got room. to. We could go in tighter if we wanted to and still be okay. So let's take a look at this. Let's hit OK. And we can see that now, instead of a nasty jump cut, we're just uh, getting closer to her in the... And you've probably noticed this a lot uh, in current productions where the angle of the camera doesn't change. It just quickly gets in closer. All right, so let's take a look at some other things that we can do. One of the things that's nice to do is a slow push in. Oh, by the way, we should uh, point out something here. Because true 4K video, the 4096 times 2160, is at a little bit different aspect ratio than high definition video, you'll notice that the way it comes into a high definition timeline is it presents with a little, what some people call a black bar at the top and bottom. 
And so this clip from my Canon C200, the raw video clip that we have here, is showing up um, kind of at the wrong aspect ratio for our project. So the first thing that we want to do is kind of conform that to our project and uh, we can do that again with our layouter tool that's f7 and what I like to do again is just to uh, change this to 25 percent so I can grab a handle here and just pull that out until it fills the frame let go and we now fill the whole high definition or HD frame and what I would recommend you're doing you don't want to have to go through this step for every clip that's like this hit OK and go over to your layouter tool here in the information box right click on it save as a current user preset and it will have popped into whatever effect folder is open let's rename this let's call it 4k to UHD now, whenever you come across one of these clips that's not filling up your whole frame for an HD video timeline, you can just go uh, to your effect palette, find this preset that you've made, and just drop it onto your clip. You don't have to physically do it every time. So what we can do with this clip, sometimes for effect or, or a dramatic feel, I like to kind of do a slow push in. When you're shooting with DSLR cameras and even the Canon C200, Unless you have a very expensive lens, you can't do the servo zoom like I used to be able to on my old video cameras. I like to used to do a kind of a slow push in. Well, now if you're working with 4K video on an HD timeline, you can add that slow push in for dramatic effect. And how you do that is uh, again with our layouter tool, F7. Let's go to the very first frame of our clip, and I just usually check the main layouter box at the top there and then the top keyframe which adds keyframes to everything it's just easier for me at least to hit them all rather than try and figure out which ones I want I usually go down the timeline maybe a second or two and hit the keyframes again so that we have no push for the very first second or so of the clip and then I'll take the timeline cursor down the line and with my mouse I'll stretch out the shot and the more you pull it out the faster the push will be and I don't like a really fast push that's kind of like news report video right but for uh, documentaries you want it to be very subtle so over a what is it about 10 seconds there you don't want it to uh, pushing in too far and sometimes you might have to take a look at it and make adjustments let's try this you'll see that it adds some keyframes there and let's hit OK and give it a look so now when we play it the first second or so is static now this because this is raw video it's stuttering a little bit um, let's bring down the resolution to half and if you are working with 4k video on an old laptop like I am for recording this tutorial you might want to experiment with your resolution options here to give you more real-time playback let's see what it does at one half and so now we have a nice slow push in okay one more thing I'll show you and that is a pan let's say your clip is just static it's not uh, doing anything but your client says you know I would like to pan across the scene what can you do well fortunately with 4k video we can and we can either use our keyboard shortcut or we could go over to our information palette here and just click on layouter and that brings out our layouter and uh, once again we can go down to either 25 percent or you could type in a, a different amount let's say 20 percent and that gives you a little bit more room to grab a handle here and move things around. Another way that you can actually enlarge or decrease your video is to scroll down the bar here and find where it says stretch. And with the preserve frame aspect ratio checked, you can point to either the X or the Y and click down your left mouse button and start scrolling up to enlarge your video or scrolling back down to, to make your video smaller. So that's another way you don't have to grab the corners but let's bring this up just a little bit more 
something like that. And then let's reposition this. And let's bring it over to the very edge for our first frame. And let's take our timeline slider to the first frame. And let's check our layouter main box there and hit all of the nodes. And again, we'll leave a little bit of space. It seems like there's a little bit of wobble with the camera there at the beginning. Let's maybe take it to about here and hit our nodes again. And here's where we can start our pan. So say we want a nice 10 to 12 second pan. We take our timeline cursor down to about there. And with your mouse, go point to your video and just slide that right across. Get to the end point. Hit OK. Let's go take a look. And so now we have a nice pan across the refugee camp in Bangladesh. Well, I believe those were the main things that I wanted to show you uh, when working with 4K video in EDIUS Pro, the different things that you can do, especially if you're working with an HD timeline. So, Frank Spangler for Learning Media Skills. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, hit the like, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. We'll catch you down the road.